What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Beauty and the Beast, where I, the Beast, hang out with the beauty and talk to you guys about pop culture, what's happening in the world. Today, we're talking to you guys and giving you our review and perspective on episode eight of HBO's The Last of Us TV show. Uh, we had a lot of negative things to say last week about episode yeah. seven. And uh, I don't have nearly as many negative uh you know, things to throw out there about this episode. I thought this episode was pretty well done. I think it was acted relatively well. And uh, I got my own thoughts about it. But before I get into it, I want to talk to the wife and uh, see how you felt about episode eight. And in this episode is when uh, Joel has been, of course, gravely injured. Ellie is trying to uh, nurse him back to health. And uh, she goes out in the woods, just like the game. And tries to hunt a rabbit. And then she sees a deer. And she ends up shooting that deer. And so she goes, you know, looking for the blood trail. And, uh, of course, she runs into problems in the form of David. Correct? Yeah. Uh, And so um, things unravel relatively quickly. And uh, just tell me briefly, what are your thoughts on uh, this episode, babe? Um... It was okay. It was one of the better ones, I guess you could say. But I still, I just, I didn't believe the connection between Ellie and Joel. And it's like their chemistry is still off to me. Um, It was like pretty, you know, scene for scene to the game. So that was pretty cool. But I found myself not really caring about it because I don't care about Ellie. I do not like this Ellie. I don't care about her. I don't. Um, you know, feel the same way as I did when I watched this part in the game. I mean, it was it was real similar and everything, but I still don't. I, I just wasn't so a fan. She she basically, um, I guess she wore out her welcome with you, and there's like nothing she can do at this point to make you feel the same. Yeah, like she just she doesn't feel like Ellie to me. Well, I think. This episode, uh, for me, it did scratch an itch. Even though I don't like Bella Ramsey as an actress for this role, I I think that uh, Ashley Johnson, even though she's older, would have been a better Ellie. She is Ellie. Um, But I I feel like, overall, this was one of the better episodes to me. And the reason was is because it wasn't needless exposition. It wasn't woke nonsense to to check boxes. It wasn't every type of... um, you know, ideology that you could possibly imagine and and, and pull out of a a rabbit out of a hat type box and throw it into an episode. To me, this this episode, they really, really stuck to the script. Um, Almost it was almost a shot for shot recreation uh, or recreation recreation of the uh, the game. And so, I mean, everything it was really hitting me with nostalgia points, watching the rabbit, you know, watching the deer, watching the deer get shot. Um, seeing the place where she and David were sitting, of course, in the game, they were infected coming. It all seemed to really, really line up. And uh, one of the, the parts of this episode, it was less believable here than it was in the game. In the game, But to see Joel interrogating those guys and, you know, doing yeah. the exact same thing he did in the game where he stabbed the guy in the knee with his, with his shiv and said, I'll pop your kneecap off tell me and he went through the entire interrogation exactly as he did in the game put the knife in his mouth told him to point to the spot on the map because if you don't then if your friend doesn't point to the same spot I'm going to kill you and and then he brutally ravaged the guy and stabbed him to death for some reason my brain is telling me that he didn't kill the guy the same way in the game I can't remember I think in the game he put his arm around the guy's neck and choked him and broke his neck and then went to the other guy, but it was very, very brutal. They had the same lines. Why are you? Why would you do that? And it was just—it seemed very visceral and very, very, very uh, scary. Not scary, but I said scary because I saw myself pop up in full view. Um, it seemed um, very uh, brutal and gritty, and uh, that's what we needed um, after all the nonsense that's been happening in these last couple episodes. I would like to see more infected. Um, I don't think there really were any in this episode, were there? There was none. That's kind of, you know, a sad thing. 
You know, yeah. we got so much opportunity for clickers and for runners and all these different types of infected. And you seem like, you know, I think it was episode three where you saw them coming out of the ground. That was like it. Yeah. And since then, there's been like nobody. There was one guy in the Left Behind episode. It just, you know, kind of it kind of diminishes the fear factor of the game. But yep. um, what did you think about David? And uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember his his uh, henchman's name. His henchman uh, in this episode was actually pre- played by Troy Troy Baker, uh, Troy Baker, who um, yeah. voiced Joel in the game. In the game, yeah. Um, I mean, I, he played a good role. I think he did good. He acted well. The scenes where, like, him and Ellie were in that place when she was in the cage. And she was like, she was like, Ellie, the girl who, um, what'd she say? It was like something like the girl who bit your fucking finger or something like that. Yeah, that was tight. Um, and then when them, they were like in the burning building, you know, that was like the game. It was kind of like, a, this is one of the better episodes because they, yeah. they, 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 they really hit all these spots of nostalgia. You know, and it was like the game. Of course, Ellie wasn't running around, you know, hiding and then stabbing and run hide again. But um, you still felt that same feeling of her hiding and him looking for her. And you felt the the drama of, okay, it's on fire and him not caring. And you knew what he was after. And then they showed it in a very similar light. David didn't look like he did in, in the game. He, he was more of a preacher type guy. And it gave him a little bit more backstory. Uh, how did how you feel about his little compound, Dave's compound, um, where he uh, had these people who were like basically under his spell they're eat, I, eating these really great TV dinners for dinner every night. I don't see that happening. I don't see like him, you know, smacking the little girl and everyone just being quiet, staring like. Please, like, I would have took like, that place over so damn quick. I was like, hold on. Now, now, firstly, there was a scene out where uh, Troy Baker's character, who is David's henchman, was trying to tell him, "Hey, look, we need to just kill this girl or let her go," because he didn't. He said it's another mouth to feed. He was like. We bring her back with us. And he wanted to bring Ellie back because he wanted some poom tang. I guess he wanted to create his own little coven of Nexium women, right? If I was in that situation, I would have popped a cap in his ass so quick. I would say, hey, look, this dude's making really bad decisions and it's costing all of us. So I'm the new leader. I'm the biggest. I'm the strongest. I'm the smartest. And I can grow the best beard. Well, Troy Baker's beard is pretty good. But I would have definitely not followed behind some loser like that guy. Yeah, I don't see how everyone seems so scared of him and like, were you, I don't, it, it was lame. <laughs> were you shocked to see those bodies hanging upside down? So for, this is a spoiler for people who haven't seen episode eight. Uh, David, he has kind of like this community of people. They found this little town that they're inhabiting. It's like 20 or 30 people. And they've been eating human beings and only like four people know it. And they're all starving. They got like canned peanuts and, and canned potatoes and stuff like that. And, and David's been, you know, killing people. I guess people have been coming through. And he has his henchmen kill them, behead them, bleed them out, and hang them up, you know, to, to bleed out. And then they've been serving these people up, his little uh, morsels. With as the, venison. As venison. Um, yeah. I mean, would you eat, like, if you were starving in that no. situation? You, if you were starving in that situation and somebody cooked a meal that looked just like... Um, uh, let's well, think. obviously, if the people didn't know what it was they were eating, but I'm sure it didn't taste like anything they've had before. But still, if I knew, like, I wouldn't go and do something like that. See, this is a, a, you know, a lesson for you guys. I know my wife. I know everything about her. So if something happened to you and then all of a sudden they came back and they were serving this bowl of food, I'd take a bite like, that tastes just like my wife's ass. I would have known. They would have been in trouble. I would have destroyed him, okay? It would have been a wrap. <laughs> I really liked the episode. It was much better than than the previous one to me. Uh, it kind of... Um, and the reason... I, I've been mulling this over in my head why I liked it. I liked it because the simple fact that they stuck to the script. They didn't add any nonsense. And it basically told a very important part of the game. And they told it in a very similar way to the way yeah. they did in the game. Uh, of course, Ellie ends up fighting David like she does in the game. And, and she handles business the way she does in the game. And in the end, Joel 
uh, finds Ellie, where she's basically walking out of this town. Now, in the game, Joel and Ellie kill 20 people, 25 people. Yeah, and, okay. and in the game, they had zombies when she was alone with um, David. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I would have liked to see at least a little bit of that, you know, of a zombie or two, but they don't even throw those in there. Yeah, you think about all the opportunities they missed to infuse so much other garbage into this this series when it could have been so much better. Yep. Ultimately, Ellie, she ends up leaving uh, and getting out of this little commune. Only two or three people knew. It was kind of crazy to see Joel in the, this TV show kill Troy Baker's character. That was a pretty interesting moment for Troy Baker, who is the guy who is the voice of Joel. When I see Troy Baker, I think more about more of him being Joel than this guy who's playing Joel now. I think Troy Baker, that's Joel. That's what I think in my mind. So it was really a, a like a cool paradigm to see Troy Baker get brutally murdered. Uh, oh, in fact, wasn't Ellie the one who killed him? Yeah. Yeah, Joel killed some guy who looked like him. I thought it was Troy Baker at first. Ellie stabbed him in the neck and killed him. So just take that all back. Missed opportunity, Neil. Just like everything else you've done in this show. Uh, the last scene was one that you talked about when uh, Ellie ran outside. It was so annoying. It's like um, when she went, went outside, Joel came up behind her to like calm her down. But instead of saying something like, hey, it's okay. It's me. It's Joel. It's okay. He was just like, ah, it's a, uh. And, and like, I was like, why? Why would you do that? What is happening? It was so stupid to me. <laughs> it really made me mad. Oh, that was funny. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I at the end of the episode, I was like, this is great. And then she brought that up. I was like, yeah, that was pretty, pretty fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's like, why wouldn't you just say, Ellie. <laughs> yeah, why didn't she say, Ellie, it's me. It's okay. It's Joel. It's okay. Come here. And like, they couldn't even get that right. <laughs> It is what it is. Um, if you had to rate it, like on a A, B, C, how would you rate this episode? I don't was know. Was it better uh, than the last episode, Left Behind? Yeah, yeah. It was better than the last episode. It was it was one of the better ones of the whole season, actually. We got one I left. Just, you think they're going to nail it, stick the landing, or you think they're going to months in no. this? It's going to be a Munson. Munson, Munson deal. For people who know about the movie Kingpin, you know about Munson. Um, I just... I can't, I can't get the feeling of Joel and Ellie being like Joel and Ellie. Yeah, it's like that. It's so hard, and it takes me out of it, and it makes. He me doesn't so look mad. like Joel to me, and he can't grow a real beard. He doesn't look like Joel, and it looked like somebody just like super glued. They took some gorilla glue and like did three dots and put some cotton on the side of his cheeks. He doesn't. He doesn't seem like Joel, and of course she just looks like Down Syndrome Debbie. I don't know what to say about her. But even their chemistry, it's like through the whole seasons, it's like they weren't mashing well together. And then all of a sudden, oh, my gosh, my savior, give me a hug. Oh, I love you, baby girl. And it's like, no. <laughs> yeah, he did say that, didn't he? Baby yeah. girl, baby girl. <laughs> no. In the game, at least they were more like, you know, meshed well together. Way better than this show. They were like me and you. I got, I got you. All right. Well, I guess that's we'll leave it there for this episode. Yeah. We got one more to go, and a lot has to happen in this last episode. So. Yeah, how are they going to fit it all in? And the story of my life. You guys let us know what you think in the comment section below. Did you watch episode 8? Did you like episode 8? Do you agree with our ideas and synopsis on this episode? Was it better than the last episode? Did you like Left Behind more? Did you like some of the other episodes more? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Be sure to give a thumbs up to show support for the Beastly Gamer channel. We do appreciate all those thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. I'm the Beastly Gamer. And I'm Kate. And we'll see you guys next time.